Hello everybody, this is Toys R Us and for this special figure showcase and review we're going to be looking at the 1985 Insecticon Decepticon bombshell figure. So what we're going to do with this video, we're going to have a detailed look at him in both of his modes, help you decide how you want to display him. We'll have a look at the accessory that comes with him to help you know if yours is complete. Because he's a vintage figure, I'll point out things that you need to be aware of if you're after purchasing one for yourself. And of course we can do some comparisons with some other bombshell figures that have been released in the Generation 1 toy line and indeed down the Generations toy line as well. So as you can see, quite a bit to get through today. And I'd like to remind anybody who's not subscribed to this channel, if they'd like to hit that subscribe button for me now, please, because it really will help me out. So these little guys, it's great to see them getting some more love. The Insecticons were just fantastic when they burst onto the scene. I think it was in the Sunbow cartoon first. Something so simple and it's just something, again, so great. Now, these figures were um, pre-transformer figures as well. That's why they've got these chest cavities which open up and they don't actually do anything. They used to have pilots in them, but that, again, is a completely different, well, not a different toy line, but it's a different story. So we will bypass that. We're going to have a look at him in his robot mode first and foremost and i think the thing that you forget about these is how small they were and i suppose how simple they all are there's obviously no articulation in the head this is all one huge piece that's all molded together um, there's articulation in the shoulders it will go all the way around but it also goes back but that is of course just for transformation purposes there's no movement in the legs really apart from the bending there at the knee but again that is for transformation purposes now you can already see that the things to be aware of is in fact the chrome and the chrome fade that is something that is super common with these figures um, and it's got chrome in both modes so it is something that's quite important i've seen examples as well where these wheels start to fade not fade corrode because they are metal and indeed as you can see there's quite a lot of screws in this as well overall though we've got that brilliant head sculpt um, and again it's just a super brilliant little figure we've got the robot uh, rub sign on the back there with more stickers to be honest you can get away with this not having too many stickers it's not too detrimental um, and what i was saying earlier about how small they are i think you sort of forget um, I've got a today's standard core class sound wave, which you can see, and you know, he's pretty much about the same size. Yeah, he's not as perhaps wide with the big um, arms there at the side, but he's easily the same height, which is crazy because you don't remember these figures being that small um, at all. Um, here is his weapon, if you want to know if yours is complete. So you can see you've got the little uh, tab there that's obviously the most important if that's broke it won't fit in his hand and again you can see there's chrome on it and that is why we've got quite a bit of glare going on and again excuse the glare from the package we'll have a look at that in a second so that i think is pretty much all there is to say about him in robot mode now of course the um, alternate mode which is brilliant it's a rhinoceros beetle and again it is super simple uh, for those of you wondering what the transformation process is i'm going to upload it separately just for a bit of fun so you can see how simple it is um again super simple super just really nice alternate mode again there's the wheels i mentioned and more so when the arms are this way it's important that this bit isn't actually snapped off the wheels if this was a nice flat surface they do obviously enable him to roll along and as you can see we're missing the stickers off the top part there but it's not too detrimental when he's in this particular mode um you can't attach the weapon to my knowledge um this i mean you could put it in his hand is what i'm trying to say i know with lots of new figures they like you to be able to to store the weapons on him um and to be honest well you can do i never even realized or thought of doing that however it doesn't look the greatest and you're probably more likely to damage it than anything else so it's something that i'm not going to do um there's not much more to say about the alternate mode um again apart from the fact that it is uh quite small um uh, interestingly enough though uh, in the generation one continuity of figures they did release an action master version of him which was a european exclusive and again same sort of height didn't really transform at all but his action master i suppose backpack or whatever is a nice a nice creature pretty much near enough resembling it's not a full rhinoceros beetle but it looks um it's just again i think a great homage to this particular figure before we do some more comparisons let's have a quick look at this one i am lucky enough that this one is sealed um, and you can see him all packaged away neatly in there again with none of the stickers stickers put on there is his lovely artwork 
And funnily enough, yeah, there is, of course. Why have I not got that? Why have I not? Oh, because you can't. It's pretty much impossible to get that coming over by the looks of it. It'd have to be like that. I've only just really noticed that one as well, to be honest. Uh, that's, again, copying the artwork there with the um, antenna a bit coming over the top. Yep, that is indeed, funnily enough, how they are displaying him. Uh, this is this is interesting. This is a 10 franc. So this originally cost 10 francs when it was released and it's made its way here from France. There's the tech spec um, information there. And this is the 1985 battle scene with the Dinobots, Shockwave, Jetfire and the infamous Red Tracks. So lots of Diaclone figures in there. And I think that's all there is to say with there. Now, to be honest, he hasn't really been... He's one of them figures that, although he's been around since the very early days of Generation 1, we've not seen very many versions of him. Now, and again, we are very lucky because hopefully we're going to be getting a new deluxe version of him. But the last, I suppose, proper version of him was from Combiner Wars in 2015. And this guy was a brilliant little homage uh, to the original. In fact, he's a little bit smaller as well. Um, but he looks great, I suppose, to give you an idea of how big these are compared to today's standards. We've already put a little sound wave up, but this is a very small deluxe figure. And of course, that still towers over him. This is a more normal sized deluxe figure, shall we say. And then if we go for a leader class figure, he's completely tiny compared to a today's standard leader class figure. Let's just move these out of the way. So there's just one more um, to show you. And this was an e-hobby exclusive that was released in a pack of three. And he was known as the Salvo Drones. So this was another use of the original mould. And this one's really interesting. And it's got a great, great colour scheme on him. So you can see they've just got more brown in the legs. The red um, on the main part of the body and also not to forget because these are quite old this is actually die cast this is metal it's not plastic and when you hold these two in your hand the weight difference is just it's so ridiculous it's unbelievable that this feels three maybe four times heavier than that so this was again an e-hobby exclusive from 2004 known as the salvo drones and it's the e-hobby collector's edition if anybody is looking for this and wondering what it is i'm going to be doing a separate video on these guys pretty soon to be honest but i think there's not much more to say about this guy apart from he's a great little figure and i for one definitely cannot wait for the new updated version the new deluxe kickback's been absolutely fantastic and if he's anything to go by i think we're in for a treat with the new one of this let me know what you think of him you may already have one or you may now be interested in going and getting one for yourself because you've seen this video I just want to say, yeah, there is this articulation there as well. I think I said that. If I didn't, there we are. I'm just showing you that in the arm. But again, I've covered everything for this. Let me know what you think of him. Do you own one? Are you interested in getting one? And are you, like me, excited for the new version that's coming out soon? Take care, everyone. Thanks for watching. Like and comment. And don't forget to subscribe.